Hi guys, welcome back. So today, first of the fun videos, it's suspension time. I decided to go with the uh, Bilstein B12 kit. So B8 dampers and Ibac Pro, Pro Springs. Uh, the nice thing about this kit, it comes pretty much complete, front and rear shocks. Uh, rear shocks come with bump stops already. And front shocks, front shocks are inverted, so monotube dampers, and they don't require any bump stops. So that's a bonus. Uh, I've also got some new top mounts for the front shocks. SKF, I've got rear top and bottom mounts. So Ferry Bilstein bottom mounts and KYB top mount kit. Now this is the only kit that I can find, which is a non-OEM repair kit, which comes with every single part that you need to rebuild the rear top mounts because the common issue on these cars is this piece here rusts really badly and then the rear shock absorbers shoot through into the interior and um, you have to usually get these bits from BMW. But this is a complete kit. So this is the uh, bottom bit, this is the top bit and you've got the insert and the little rubber protector boot as well, which is a nice little bit of kit and it's um, very reasonably priced. And finally, we have some M3 control arms. So the OEM supplier for the control arms on the E9 XM3 is TRW. And as you can see here, they aren't allowed to sell BMW branded stuff. So the BMW logo has been scrubbed off. Um, these arms should give me a little bit more camber because they're ever so slightly longer. They also have a ball joint in this joint here rather than a bush, uh, which gives it a little bit more stiffness. And uh, this bush here is a little bit stiffer um, compared to the standard non-M uh, control arm bush. Uh, the only other thing you need is uh, the little uh, headlight um, level sensor arm, which bolts onto here, which I also have. and. Um, I've also gone and bought uh, a rear rear right spring um, 10 mil adapter, which basically raises up rear right hand side of the car because the car being right hand drive uh, tends to sit um, about half an inch lower on the right hand side on the rear. So um, BMW actually do this adapter to um, level the car out. So this is the lever arm for the headlight level sensor, which goes onto the control arm around there somewhere. And this here is the spring adapter, which sits in the um, upper spring seat on the right-hand side on the rear of the car, which we'll get to once we're installing it. And that's the part number for it. And this is the part number for the lever arm. I will be using a couple of parts from the old suspension uh, leg uh, to assemble the new one. So uh, I'll be using the upper and lower uh, spring seats, uh, the rubbers. Uh, there's also a little washer that sits between the top mount um, and uh, the spring seat. Uh, the, the upper spring cap and uh, there's also a little um, protective shield that goes uh, on the bottom of the top mount to protect this area here. So we'll have to disassemble the um, uh, suspension leg assemblies and remove the springs off of them to get to these parts so we can reuse them on the new assemblies. I could have got them from BMW, but I didn't fancy spending an additional uh, 40 or 50 pounds because those parts uh, don't really need to be replaced. And if you can use the old ones, I might as well. So we'll get onto this. I'll jack up the car, get the wheel off, then we'll get onto the uh, bolts that hold the shock in, undo the drop link, and we'll see if we can get it out. Now, I've also gone and bought these bolts here. Uh, they are the pinch bolts, um, which are used to secure the shock absorber to the, um, to the hub. And nine times out of 10, they're completely seized and they need replacing so they either snap or you can't get them out. So hopefully mine are okay, but regardless, 
uh, I, will, I will be replacing them with the new ones. So just in the middle of removing the first shock absorber assembly and I've undone the bolt, luckily it came out without too, much, too many issues, but this is what it looks like. So you can see that it's got quite a lot of aluminium debris on it and that's usually what prevents it from coming out. So I don't think it's an original bolt because the car is 18 years old now, I think. Um, and that bolt would have looked a lot worse after 18 years. So I think it has been replaced at some point, but we're gonna put new ones on it anyway. Uh, in case you have a seized one of these, a seized bolt that doesn't wanna come out, uh, the only way around it is um, to keep working it in and out and to gently tap it while you're trying to undo it, ideally with an impact gun. So once you've undone the nut um, and it's spinning, um, if you've got the impact gun on one side and you're gently tapping it on the other side and you keep working it in and out, in and out, eventually they do come out. And the drop link nut has also been undone. But if you're working on the car one side at a time like I am, the anti-roll bar is in tension at the moment. So the best thing to do to release it is to put a pry bar just here big lever and to pull the anti-roll bar down so then you can just pop pop this actually out fairly easily with one hand and that's it it's out um, so the next thing is to release the tension from the control arms so from here and from there, because what you want to do is you want to leave the shock absorber uh, in the hub. You want to undo it from the top, the three 13 mil uh, nuts that hold it to the body. And then you want to drop it out and get it outside the body of the car. And then you can pull it from out of the hub. So in order to do that without much resistance, you've got to loosen these bolts here on the control arms to allow them to rotate freely to give you the maximum amount of movement. Otherwise, um, at the moment, they will be resisting um, you trying to pull the suspension leg down. So now I've undone the brace. Uh, it's a female Torx drive, E40. You can also use, uh, I think a 16 point socket on it as well, conventional one. I think it's like a 12 or a 13 mil, but it's always best to use an actual socket designated for the bolt. Um, three 13 mils that hold the top mount on, and then the shock absorber just dropped out. It's always a good practice to make sure that the wheel speed sensor cable has been removed from all the bracketry just so there's enough slack in it for when the leg drops down, uh, it doesn't actually rip it. Uh, the brake hose seems to be okay, it's perished, so that's going to be getting replaced ASAP with the brakes, but I'm not going to uh, touch on too much on that in this episode, perhaps in the next one, when I do the brakes. And usually, once this bolt's removed, you can just get the shock absorber out, but if you have a chisel or a spreader tool uh, or a big screwdriver that can fit in there, pop it in there, tap it in with a hammer, uh, it will release this, open up this joint ever so slightly, and then you can just slide this out. It should look something like this, and then you can give it a good wiggle. It will come out eventually. There we go. Done. As you can see, it's not in the best state. It's not leaking yet, but the bump stop is completely destroyed. It looks like it's had a replacement spring at some point. And it's just really, really due a replacement. So I'm glad I'm finally getting around to doing it. Only other thing I'd recommend when assembling uh, the new shock absorber onto here is make sure you clean the surface here. Uh, get a wire brush in there, then clean it with a cloth 
and just make sure it's nice and clean for when the shock absorber goes on it gets a really nice even grip on the bottom of the shock and it stays in properly. Now we'll have to reuse some of the parts from this like I said earlier. The lower rubber for the spring to sit on, the upper rubber for the spring to sit on, this metal spring seat cap and inside there there's a little spacer and a little cap for the grease to be retained within the top mount. So we'll get some spring clamps on this, undo this big nut here and we should be able to disassemble it and reuse the parts like we need to. And this is what it looks like all disassembled. So we'll be using this piece here. And we will be using all of this. So the little spacer always goes the domed way up. Domed face to the top mount. The upper spring seat cap and the upper rubber spring seat. So we'll be using them. This, this, and this little cap as well. And that, that, and that can go in the bin. And here you go. The rubber's on. The new eyeback spring's compressed. The upper spring seats are on. This washer, uh, domed side up, goes on. The protective cap goes on. And then we get the top mount. See, it doesn't come with a cap. Goes on. And then let's get the new nut onto there. Get it tightened up, get the spring compressors off and we can pop it on. And this is what it should look like all installed. So that's the new bolt. Make sure that this is in before you put the bolt in. This little bracket here that holds the wheel speed sensor wiring. The wheel speed sensor wiring comes out, goes over, around and onto there. So make sure that's done. Um, next, I'm going to get on to doing the arms. When you put the shock absorber into the hub, I don't actually um, tighten the bolt until the shock absorber is actually bolted up at the top. So I put it in, there's enough tension in it, enough friction uh, to hold everything up, uh, slide it all the way up, put the three 13mm nuts onto the top mount so it's nice and steady, and then I'll go ahead and um, tighten this nut here. Now, the thing to watch out for is that this controls the ride height. So make sure that's seated all the way down. Mine is slightly up because my hub has got a notch in it. So if I pushed it all the way down, then it would be a couple of millimeters lower than it should be. So I've pulled it out ever so slightly. Um, so it sits where it needs to be. But in your case, if there's no damage on your hub, then you can slide it all the way down until it stops. And equally, if you wanted to lower your car further, what you can do is um, you can remove the shock absorber and you can trim however many millimeters off of this block here to allow the shock absorber to sit lower and then that will lower your car. And if you wanted to raise your car up by a few millimeters, you can also do the same, but just sliding it up and measuring the distance here because this is only there uh, to serve a purpose of controlling uh, where the shock absorber is clamped into the hub rather than actually supporting it. The friction uh, between uh, the hub and the shock absorber is actually what's holding it together. So now I'm doing the control arm, this one here, and the bolt that's down there, that bolt there, usually once this bolt is loose, uh, the ball joint will start spinning and you can either put a spanner onto the nut and hold the ball joint with an allen key because there's an allen key drive on it or if you want to save time you can just prop it up um, with 
whatever you have axle stands bricks blocks of wood just like that and lower the car onto it ever so slightly just so there's enough friction in the ball joint to allow you to undo this nut and this is what the arms look in comparison so this is the old one with the old bushing in here this is the new one with the ball joint slightly different but they fit perfectly fine and the good news is you can actually tighten these arms without having to level the suspension the non-m arms because they have a bush a bushing in here and they've got these teeth they have to be tightened when the suspension is level so when the car is on its whole four wheels under its own weight uh, in order not to put any loading rotational loading into this bushing but because this is a ball joint uh, it doesn't actually have any anti-rotation teeth in here so even if it's clamped with um, at the wrong angle with the car's wheels up um, this ball joint can rotate freely um, so you don't have to worry about that when you're installing this one and onto undoing the second control arm this very bottom nut which sits here right there it's been an absolute pain in the backside so as you can imagine the exposed tip of the ball joint the threaded bit has got some corrosion on it so when the nut actually gets to that corroded bit it starts to get stuck on the ball joint and the ball joint starts to rotate so really you should put an allen key in there and use a spanner but if you're being lazy you can leave this end of the control arm connected and pry it against the anti-roll bar so just get a big breaker bar or any kind of bar for that matter pry it so you're applying pressure down on the ball joint from this end and then get a impact gun onto there and keep working it back and forth and use lots of uh, release agent so wd-40 or any other lubricant so keep going back and forth and then eventually will come out and this is what the old arm looks like bmw trw for some reason the new TL trw arm doesn't have any trw logos on it it just has r for right hand side but the main difference between these two um, is the bushing in here so that's the non-M bushing and this is E92, E90 M3 bushing uh, which is solid and is a lot stiffer so it should give you a much better uh, feel of the road when it's installed but unfortunately with this one uh, because it isn't a ball joint this um, joint here will have to be tightened uh, when the weight of the car is down so ideally uh, on the ramp somewhere or we can um, estimate what the right height was going to be and then uh, jack up this wheel measure the gap between the center of the hub and the fender and um, that way we'll roughly know that that's in the right position and then we can tighten this bolt uh, on the arm right and this is what it looks like all done so the pinch bolt is tightened and replaced all the routing is correct the little bracket holding the wire for the wheel speed sensor is in place the control arms are in place the new shock leg assembly top mount which you can't really see and now onto the other side the other side is exactly the same as this side other than there is an additional um, lever for the headlight level sensor which needs to be attached to this arm there on the other side and a few moments later the left hand side is also complete you can see the headlight level sensor just there better shot of it and everything else is more or less the same as on the other side. Now, one thing I didn't do when installing the suspension legs was I should have removed these pins from the top mounts to allow me to adjust the camber ever so slightly. Um, so I think what I'm going to do without removing uh, the top mounts and the uh, suspension leg assemblies, I'm just going to drill them out 
uh, and then when the car goes for alignment they'll be able to adjust the camber exactly the way it's supposed to be so uh, because the M3 control arms are slightly different to the non-M non-M arms they uh, push the bottom of each wheel further out uh, therefore giving you more camber so what that means is uh, the toe goes in substantially without adjustment so when you first fit the arms um, this is what the toe will look like it's about 22 degrees in as you can see and that's really really horrible to drive so I took the car out for a test drive and um, it was pulling in every direction and it was just fighting itself constantly because the wheels were towing in um, so I took it to the alignment place and I had just the front toe corrected for the time being because the rear end isn't done yet so the front toe was set straight to get me by for the minute and once I do the rear end I'll go back to the alignment place and then everything else will be adjusted um, and hopefully by then I would have drilled out uh, the little pins in the front top mounts to allow me to set the camber correctly or at least evenly on each side and hopefully the rear end uh, would have settled by then and we can adjust the rear end too and this is what the right height looks like with both sides installed on the front and after a few days of settling and now that the um, front toe is set straight it's fairly similar to what it used to be before i didn't expect it to be much lower but honestly i can't really tell the difference um, as far as the handling is concerned it already feels a thousand times better than it did before the suspension feels great uh, the control arms give it a really nice um, feedback through the steering wheel and the car is just coming along really really nicely i just can't wait to get the rear end done but i'll cover the rear end uh, in the next video because this video is is dragging on for a little bit too long for my liking and i'm trying to keep it nice and nice and short around the 20 minute mark uh, the only other thing i'd mention is on the left hand side i did end up having to cut um, the nuts off of the control arm ball joints because they were seized and everything I tried resulted in frustration and I just couldn't get those nuts off of the uh, uh, the ball joint studs. So uh, if you're stuck like I was on that, uh, get the angle grinder out, cut them up and just replace the arms. It's uh, probably the easiest way of doing things. So um, just to cover the cost of everything, everything I've covered in this video, so the suspension kit, the top mounts, the bottom mounts, um, uh, the little lever arm uh, for the headlight level sensor, the uh, adapter for the rear right hand side spring, uh, all of that comes to around about a thousand pounds, plus minus a couple of pounds. So we'll just say a thousand pounds for argument's sake, and that's the total cost of this suspension. Uh, so thanks again for watching, and I will see you again in the next one, hopefully when I cover the rear end, and then the subsequent ones too. All the best. Take care. Thank you.